All right, y'all. All right, y'all, we'll start talking about calendula here in just a minute. Give some folks a second to check in. Alrighty. So we'll get started here. Um, I'm Sam. Um, I'm one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living as well as the um, garden steward. Um, usually today we'd be doing a Bodhi garden tour, but instead, uh, thank you all for joining me here at my house in my apothecary. Talk about one of my favorite herbs, calendula. Um, so is a popular one. I think a lot of folks, um, love and know calendula, but if you don't, uh, that is totally cool too. And we'll dive deep into why we love it so much. Um, so calendula, it's, um, a type of marigold, sometimes known as pot marigold. It is calendula officinalis. It's a Latin name. It is in the Aster family, the Asteraceae family, uh, the same family as our sunflowers, echinacea, chamomile, and a lot of our other herbs. Um, so I'm trying to make sure we don't have questions here. Awesome. Um, bear with me, y'all. I'm trying to make sure I'm getting all my bases covered here as we go live online. We're good to go. Um, so yeah, it's in the Aster family, the sunflower family, daisy family, um, possibly the largest flowering plant, flowering plant family in the world, possibly behind the orchid family, but with the changing of taxonomy and whatnot, we're not positive. Super huge flowering plant family um, and contains calendula, our plant of the month this month that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so I don't have, since we're not in the garden and I don't have with me here today, um, a calendula plant, we will talk a little bit about the botany of it and I'll show y'all, um, with this image here that I have. Um, so we've got this beautiful picture of calendula, um, making sure y'all can see that. Um, so calendula is yellow to orange flowers. Um, many different varieties of yellow to orange, super gorgeous plant. Um, but whichever way that works, let's see here. Um, like almost all flowers, most which I know in the Aster family, um, they're going to have two different kinds of flowers. And these are going to be called disc and ray flowers. Um, so the center flowers here, the little yellow ones you're going to see, are going to be your disc flowers. And each one of these flowers is going to produce a seed. Um, just like in your sunflower, how that center gets full of all of the sunflower seeds, the same thing's going to happen here with your calendula. So the center flowers are your disc flowers. Right along the outside here, that kind of looks like they've got their own petals, are the ray flowers. Um, so again, disc and ray flowers, something true of calendula and um, most of our other aster plants. Um, so technically a perennial, um, but usually treated as an annual, um, definitely here in Florida. Um, it is going to wither with our heat right about now when it starts getting pretty hot. It's going to start being a little too susceptible to pests and disease, and we're going to start seeing a loss of production. The plant's going to die back once it starts getting real hot. Um, the same goes with up north. It's not going to make it through those those long cold winters. So mostly treated um, as an annual. 
um, but grows well here in Florida. It's gonna be one of our cool weather crops. Um, so our last flowers that are gonna be harvesting here in central Florida are gonna be right about now. Um, but if we plant it in the fall and in the winter, we will get beautiful spring harvest of calendula flowers. Um, really cool seeds that I wanna show you guys. I'll show you in just a second. Um, but calendula is pretty broadly tolerant of soil. It likes well-drained for sure. Um, obviously really rich, delicious, loamy soil is great, but it's pretty broadly tolerant in that way. It's a pretty easy plant to grow for most folks. Um, full sun for sure. It can do partial shade, but really loves the full sun. It's a really sunshiny plant. Um, let me show you all the seeds. So like I said, each one of those disc flowers is going to turn into um, a seed. And these seeds are really cool. I don't know how well you guys can see, but they're like very cool, very crazy shaped. Um, there's lots of different sizes. I just think they're really neat if you're into seeds and that kind of thing. Um, so you'll sow your seeds. Like I said, if you're in Florida, you'll sow them in the fall and in the winter for a spring harvest, late winter, spring harvest. Um, not sure if I mentioned this, they spread a little bit, um, not too much, not a, not a nuisance or not weedy in any way at all in your garden. Um, but they'll be about one foot, one and a half feet tall, not super big, super beautiful, lots of color in your garden. Um, pollinators love them as well. Um, it self seeds a little bit, so you will get a couple of volunteers in your garden. Great. If you don't want them where they are, the year that they come out and move them, keep them for the bees, keep them for yourself. Um, awesome garden plant, pretty easy to grow. Uh, starts, I would say are kind of difficult to find, but uh, finding seeds, pretty simple. Um, any of your favorite seed providers may uh, possibly have some calendula seed. Um, something I didn't mention, it's probably native to Southern Europe, but because of its um, long, long history of cultivation, it's really hard to track exactly where the first calendula was, um, but it's pretty naturalized in Southern Europe northern Europe and any of those temperate regions. Um, grows well here in Florida, just about everywhere um, in your in your cooler, more mild climates, um, mild seasons at least. Let's see, it does well in containers. Um, awesome if you've got a sunshiny patio porch in your apartment or whatever like that. Um, also called pot marigold, not sure if I mentioned that, but for that same reason, grows in pots really well. Also, um, in the vein of that name has been used in soups as a soup herb as well. Um, pollinators love it, I mentioned that. Um, you're gonna harvest the flowering tops for your medicine. Um, and you're gonna wanna harvest those when they're nice and open, nice and full, and you'll pop the tops right off. Um, dry them on a screen, Not uh, lots of good airflow, not a moist area, a dry area. Um, you're also going to want to do that to keep your uh, your calendula flowering throughout the season. If you deadhead is is what it's known as. Um, throughout the season, I'm seeing questions. If you live in Connecticut, can you plant now? Hmm, I would. I've never lived in Connecticut, but I would. I would go for it. I would check with maybe your extension. Um, most regions and universities uh, have an extension, uh, agriculture extension, horticultural extension. They can give you a little more seasonal info but I would go for it if I was in Connecticut, for sure. Let me know how it goes. Cool, sorry, trying to, trying to keep up with questions if we've, if we've got them. I hope that's helpful. For ya, Rachel. Cool, um, well, let's get a little bit into usage here. So like I said, we're gonna use the flowers. Um, nice and sticky, really sticky flowers, nice and resinous. Um, really aromatic and smelly. Um, we're gonna use the flowers dried or fresh, uh, either way. Um, the affinities that this plant has for our body systems is for our skin, um, our gastrointestinal system, our respiratory system, and um, our lymphatic system, immune system. So let's get a little bit into that. Um, so the flowers, like I said, are resinous. They're gonna be cooling as well, slightly astringent, a um, little bit of a bitter taste as well. Um, those are going to be your energetics, your properties. 
Uh, lots of folks know them for a popular skin remedy, uh, antibacterial topically as well as internally, but right now we're just gonna talk about skin for a minute. Um, uh, antibacterial, antifungal, there also are some reports on its antiviral capabilities. Um, very, very awesome anti-inflammatory for any kind of hot, itchy skin conditions. Um, so we're gonna use that for anything like rashes, mild sunburns, uh, bug bites, um, any kind of minor infections, minor cuts, um, anything like that, anything irritated on the skin. Uh, it's also used for bruises, soreness, hemorrhoids as well, uh, minor scrapes, burns, things like that. Um, so you're gonna use that topically in the form of like a compress or a soak, um, as well as an infused oil. I wanna make a note on that in just a second. Um, your compress or your poultice, you're gonna use either an infusion of that, um, of the calendula, and you're gonna soak your clean cloth in that infusion that's already strained, no flowers or anything, and you're gonna put that clean soaked cloth directly on whatever it is that you're treating. Or uh, as a compress, you can use the actual calendula flower in uh, wrapped in your hot soaked um, fabric and apply that directly as well. You can also use an infused oil. Um, infused calendula oil is awesome. We'll get into that a little bit uh, towards the end. I'll go over some, yes, when definitely eczema. It's great for eczema for sure. Um, cool. Yeah, so an infused oil is awesome for a sunburn, dry skin, chapped skin, um, but we really want to avoid any kind of infused oils when we're talking about any kind of infection or something that could become infected. Um, so if you have an infection or something that could possibly become infected, you um, want to be using a soak or a compress or a poultice or something like that that's not going to be trapping that bacteria, that fungus, whatever you're dealing with. It's not, the oil will be trapping that in there and we don't want to do that. So avoid oils when you have infections or things that be, can become infected. Um, and when I'm, what I mean by that is uh, a dirty wound, a wound with debris that you can't get out, uh, something uh, caused, a wound caused by a dirty object, uh, any kind of animal bite, any kind of puncture wound or like major burn, you're gonna wanna stray away um, for the, from oils. Um, but again, soaks, compresses, a safer option if you're you know, unsure if you have infection or could have infection, a soak is a great way to go for that. So one of my favorite remedies with calendula topically um, is with um, Arnica and St. John's wort. I sometimes hesitate to, to talk about it because Arnica can be very irritating to some folks with sensitive skin. So please use Arnica uh, flowers with caution. Um, also only external use with this, um, but an equal part Arnica, St. John's wort and calendula uh, oil made into a salve is an awesome, awesome, super effective remedy for bruises, strains, muscle soreness, anything like that. But if you've got an allergy, if you have sensitive skin, avoid that. Um, but if you're good to go, excellent remedy, super effective. Um, don't use that on your open skin either with the Arnica. Calendula, okay. Arnica, not so much. Let's talk a little bit about the internal affinities, internal effects of calendula. So like I mentioned, the GI tract, the respiratory tract, tract in our immune system via our lymphatic system. Um, so just like I said about topically for uh, our skin irritation, it's gonna be cooling and astringent in that same way internally. Um, antibacterial as well internally. Um, so it's gonna really help soothe internal irritation to the GI tract and the respiratory system in that same way externally. Um, so for the GI system, uh, for example, indigestion, um, acid reflux, any GERD, colitis, ulcers, uh, that antibacterial uh, property mixed with the astringency, mixed with that soothing aspect, makes calendula an awesome, um, an awesome component to your formula for any kind of gastrointestinal inflammation and upset. Um, as well as in your, our GI system, it's gonna help soothe and support that respiratory system, especially if it's been strained for a while from, you know, you've had a cough for a long time, it's really dry, 
you're feeling fine, but your throat is still super dry, you're gonna wanna drink some calendula infusion to soothe that. Um, combined with sage leaves, salvia officinalis, green sage, our garden common sage, um, calendula and sage leaves together, awesome gargle for a dry uh, throat, dry sore throat. Um, in that same way, the sa um, we can use that same blend for oral lesions and mouth infections, really rinse it out with a strong antibacterial properties and kind of tighten it up with that mild astringency in the mouth as well. So we've got our GI tracts and our respiratory system. Um, so calendula is a mild lymphatic. So lymphatic is something that's gonna be supporting our lymph system's ability to really filter those, those things out that we need to get out of our, of our bodies, our toxins, bacteria, things like that. Um, so calendula helps our immune system by supporting that lymphatic action of helping cleanse our bodies. So calendula is an all-star, really awesome plant. Um, big fan of it topically is how I got introduced to it, but really I kind of throw calendula in all my tea blends and really just for, uh, for the beauty of it. It's a really beautiful plant and just seeing some nice yellow flowers floating around my tea makes me happy. Um, I like to throw it in the bath too for that same reason. Um, and as we know, we can eat the petals. Um, so a couple of petals in our salad really brightens it up, really beautiful. Um, it is also a common dye plant uh, that folks use that are into natural dyes, kind of makes a soft brown, light yellow hue. Um, and that is the gist of our usage for calendula. I'm trying to make sure I've kept up on any questions from y'all. Um, so if y'all want to hang out for a sec, I'll go over um, making an infused oil real quick. Um, there are a couple different ways to make infused oils, um, and I'll talk a little bit about some other things there with infused oils that <clears throat> we want to keep in mind when we're making them. Um, so one of those things being that a lot of the times our fresh herbs have so much water content in it, if we try to make an infused oil with them, we're going to end up with a moldy oil or a mold, an oil that's going to go rancid faster. Um, so I like to work with dried herbs or at least wilted herbs. Um, I've got some plantain here that, you know, I would work with this in an, in an oil. It's not fully, you know, like crunchy ready to be put away in the jar, but it's got a lot of that moisture content out of there. Um, so with dry herbs, you're gonna use a cold extraction method and we're gonna make a little bit of essential oil, or essential oil, we're gonna make an infused oil here, which is different than an essential oil. An infused oil is gonna be um, whatever plants we want to put in our uh, topical application, infuse in a carrier oil, and that's gonna be those fat, uh, long chains of, of oil, like olive oil, avocado oil, coconut, things like that. Um, so I like to use olive oil. It works really well. It's affordable. It feels nice on the skin. I use olive. Um, so what we want to do, you can be scientific about it if you want. Um, so if you want to do specific measurements and that's your thing, um, you're going to use a ratio, um, at least for this cold extraction with our dried herbs, we're going to use a ratio of one to five. That's grams to milliliters, um, herb to whatever oil you want. Um, that's what you can do if you want to get really specific about it to measure your infused oil. That's awesome. You can also do the folk method, which is what I tend to do. Um, and that is going to consist of lightly packing your jar. Y'all, you, I don't know if y'all can see super well. Lightly packed. It's pretty full, but it's not like stamped it, smashed in there. It's going to have a little room for all of that oil to get in. We're gonna lightly pack our jar. I'm gonna take our oil of choice. And we're gonna fill this jar so we have just about an inch covering the top of our plant matter. And you'll probably wanna let it kind of drip in there, soak in there. Um, it's going to absorb some of the oil, and you'll probably need to add some more as you let it sit. We'll let that go. Um, something I like to remind folks always, 
when you're making a infused oil to smell it, um, when you make it, see what it smells like good, nice and fresh. And to keep that in your mind for when you totally forget about your colonial oil, you forgot to date it and how old is it? And if you give it a smell, you know if it's good or bad. Um, so we are going to cap it. I like to put a layer, a layer of parchment over the top here just to prevent that interaction between the plastic on this lid. Uh, I don't have any this, right this second, so we'll just pop the lid on here. And we will always label, label, label everything with the name of your plant, what you are using, your menstruum, your oil, or whatever, and the date. Those are the bare minimums there, always label. Shake it up, give your oil some love, leave it in a um, temperature consistent place uh, that you're gonna remember, uh, not something that gets too hot or anything like that, not too much sun exposure, something you won't forget about it, shake, shake your oil as often as you remember. Let it sit for two weeks minimum, um, strain it out with some cheesecloth, give it a good squeeze, get all that good stuff out of there. And you'll probably notice some sediment after you let it sit, um, kind of like decamp that off. Let it sit for a day, decamp that off so you don't have anything that's going to make your oil go rancid. Um, and then after you've let it sit for a minimum of two weeks, I prefer to do about a month for anything that I'm macerating in that way. Um, let it sit and you can use this topically um, for any of like your dry skin, sunburns like we were talking about. Or you can, if you're into it and you'd like to make medicine, make it into a salve, add some beeswax, a little more moisture retaining. And there you have some calendula oil, a little cold extraction method. So generally, um, that is the gist of what I had to say about calendula today. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. You can hang out for a second. Um, if you do have any more questions that don't come to you right now, um, you can always email me. And my email is bodhigarden at holisticlivingschool.org. Um, it's B-O-D-H-I garden. So if you have any questions about gardening, anything like that, um, any kind of medicine making questions, feel free to shoot them my way. Um, and I wanted to plug while we're all here, we'll be having a virtual plant sale through the Florida School of Holistic Loving uh, pretty soon. And we'll let you know all those details. So keep your eye out if you want to go play in your gardens and get some plant babies. Um, and I'll see y'all soon. Take care. Thanks so much for checking in.